Chapter 4 deals with some of the more complex business situations. It talks about some of the newer modeling structures like supertype, subtype situations. It talks about a technique called the entity clustering, which is a hierarchical decomposition technique used for simplifying ER diagrams. And then it talks about how to model business rules in ER diagrams. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about supertype, subtype situation, which is very common in business and we are going to talk about the generalization and specialization techniques for creating supertypes and the subtypes and we are going to talk about a number of constraints related to the supertype and subtype situation one is called the completeness constraint and the, the other one is called disjointness constraint we are also going to talk about entity clustering and the universal data model and how to model business rules in ER diagrams So let's first talk about supertypes and the subtypes. But supertypes, subtypes situation is a very common situation in business. For example, in a university, you have student as an entity type. And within the entity type, you have a graduate students and undergraduate students. A graduate students may have a number of uh, unique attributes that are different from undergraduate students. Supertype is a generic entity type that has a relationship with one or more subtypes. For example, student would be a supertype. And then a subtype is a subgrouping of the entities in an entity type that has attributes distinct from those in other subgroupings. So undergraduate and the graduate students, you know, these would be two examples of subtypes because they have some unique attributes. And uh, between the supertype and subtype, there is something called attribute inheritance, which means the subtype entities will inherit the values of all attributes of the supertype. So for example, Let's say the supertype is student, and uh, the subtype would be undergrad and uh, grad student. Let's say there is an instance in the student supertype, John Smith, who is a graduate student. So the subtype graduate student will also inherit that instance, John Smith. All the values uh, associated with John Smith will also be inherited by the subtype graduate student. So an instance of a subtype is also an instance of the supertype. That is called attribute inheritance. The ER diagram notation for supertype and subtype looks like this. For the supertype and subtypes, you use rectangular box to represent them just like any entities. And then you draw a line here and then circle and then lines to connect to the subtypes. And then there are half circles here to show that these are subtypes. Any relationships with the supertype will be drawn with a line connecting to the supertype. Any relationship for the subtypes will be drawn with a line connecting to the subtype. Let's take a look at this example here. We have employee as the supertype, and then we have three subtypes, hourly employee, salaried employee, and the consultant. Well, the reason why there are three subtypes is because, well, these hourly employees, salaried employees, and the consultants, all of them have unique attributes. For example, for hourly employees, so there is a unique attribute called hourly rate which does not apply to salaried employee or consultant. And for consultant, there is a billing rate and the contract number that's unique to the consultant and do not apply to other types of employees. Uh, so one reason why you want to create these subtypes is because these subtypes have unique attributes associated with them. If you look at the employee supertype, it has employee number, name, address, and date height. And these are attributes common to every employee. For the supertype, you will include all the common attributes. And for the subtypes, you will only include all the unique attributes. All the common relationships with employee, so for example, the employee works for a company. So that would be a common relationship for all the employee. So for those common relationships, they will be drawn with the employee supertype. But uh, for a unique relationship like the consultant works for a consulting firm, so that should be drawn with the consultant subtype instead of the employee supertype. When do you want to use the supertype and the subtypes? Only in two situations. One is that the subtype has unique attributes, 
And the other situation is the subtype has unique relationships. Otherwise, you probably don't want to create supertypes and subtypes because as you can see in this situation, you have four entities instead of just one entity. So it's a much more complex situation. Unless it's necessary, you probably don't want to create supertypes and subtypes. In this situation, the supertype is patient, and we have two types of patients, outpatient and the resident patient. And all patients are cared for by the responsible physician. So that's a common relationship. So that's why this relationship is drawn between the responsible physician and the, the supertype patient. And for the resident patient, they are assigned a bed because they are staying at the hospital. This is a unique relationship because only resident patients will have a bed. Our patient will not have a bed. So that's why the relationship between the patient and bed is drawn between bed and the resident patient only. So how do you create supertypes and subtypes? Well, there are two techniques you can use. One is called a generalization. The generalization is referring to the process of defining a more general entity type from a set of more specialized entity types. So that's a bottom-up technique, which means when well, you start with a number of subtypes, and then you realize, well, there are some common attributes in these subtypes. Then you create the supertype from these subtypes. So it's a bottom-up technique. And uh, then specialization is the opposite of generalization. It's a process of defining one or more subtypes of the supertype and forming supertype-subtype relationship. So it's a top-down process. You start with a general entity type, and then you realize some of the instances will have unique attributes or unique relationships. So maybe I should break this general entity type into multiple subtypes. So that's called a specialization. Let's take a look at an example of generalization. Let's say you're creating a database for the Department of Motor Vehicles. We deal with a number of different types of vehicles. We deal with cars, we deal with trucks, and we deal with motorcycles. And for different types of vehicles, we have a number of attributes, like vehicle ID, price. Uh, for car, you also have number of passengers. And for truck, you also have a number of attributes, and same thing for uh, motorcycle. After developing these three entities, you realize, well, there are some commonalities among these three entities. All of them have the vehicle ID, price, engine placement, vehicle name, which includes make and model you realize, well, maybe there is a supertype here we can create. In this case, you go through the generalization process, and then you decide to create a supertype called a vehicle, which has all the common attributes, the vehicle ID price, engine displacement, and the vehicle name. And then you create two subtypes, car and a truck. And for car, there is only one unique attribute, which is the number of passengers. And for the truck, there are two unique attributes. One is capacity, the other is the cab type. What happened to the motorcycle? Because motorcycle does not have any unique attributes, so we just include the motorcycle in the supertype vehicle. So you only need two subtypes here. So that's the generalization process. Well, let's take a look at a specialization process. You start with a general entity. Let's say you're creating a database for part for your inventory. All right, you create a, this general entity called a part. Right? There's part number, description, quantity on hand, location, routing number, and then supplier information. And then you realize, well, only those supply the parts will require uh, the supplier information. If we are purchasing these parts from a supplier, then we need the supplier information. And if the part is manufactured by us, then we need a routing number for that part. So it seems like you know, some of these attributes may not apply to certain parts. Maybe there is a supertype and subtype situation here. You will break this general entity type into two subtypes. So now you have two subtypes. One is called manufacture the part, the other is called purchase the part. And the purchase the part does have some unique attributes, which is the supply information. And in this case, we can actually create 
another entity for it because it's a multi-valued attribute. For the manufactured part, it has a unique attribute called the routing number. This is a process called uh, specialization. You start with a generic entity type and then you realize there are some unique attributes, so you break this generic entity type into subtypes. So that's the generalization technique. When we look at uh, the supertype and the subtype situation, there are some business rules about the supertypes and subtypes that you need to specify in the ER diagram. The first uh, business rule is something called the completeness constraint. And the completeness constraint states that whether an instance of a supertype must also be a member of at least one subtype. If the answer to this question is yes, then it means it meets the total specialization rule. And you use a double line to show that. And if the answer to this is no, then it means it meets the partial specialization rule, and you use the single line to show that. So let's take a look at the example here. Uh, you have the patient entity type, and uh, we have outpatient and resident patient subtypes. In this case, the question you want to ask yourself is, does an instance of the supertype must be a member of at least one of the subtypes? In other words, is a patient either an outpatient or a resident patient? Or if there is a third type of patient? Well, the answer is no, there cannot be a third type of patient. The patient has to be an outpatient or a resident patient. So it means that an instance of the supertype must be a member of one of the subtypes. In this case, it meets the total specialization rule. You use a double line to show that. Let's look at another example. Well, in this example, we have vehicle and the car and the truck. So you ask yourself, an instance of a vehicle, does that instance have to be a member of one of the two subtypes? Well, the answer is no, because you also have motorcycles. And the motorcycle is not a member of car or truck. In this case, it does not meet the total specialization rule. It meets the partial specialization rule. But what you do is you use the single line to show that. The next business rule you need to specify in the supertype and subtype situation is the disjointness constraints. The disjointness constraints asks whether an instance of a supertype may simultaneously be a member of two or more subtypes. If the answer to this is no, it meets the disjoint rule. It means that an instance of the supertype can only be one of the subtypes. And if the answer to this is yes, then it means the overlap rule, which means an instance of the supertype can be a member of more than one subtypes. Let's take a look at an example here. We have the example of patient. So the question you want to ask yourself is, can a patient be an outpatient and a resident patient simultaneously? Well, the answer obviously is no. You can either be an outpatient or a resident patient. So that means it meets the disjoint rule. You put a D here in the circle. What about this example, part? We have two subtypes, manufacture the part and uh, purchase the part. Can a part simultaneously be a manufactured part and a purchased part? Well, the answer is yes. Sometimes we may manufacture that part. Sometimes we may purchase the same part from other suppliers if we do not have the manufacturing capacity. So in this case, it meets the overlap rule. So we put an O here in the circle. Why is it important for us to know if the supertype subtype meets the disjoint rule or the overlap rule? Well, the reason is because it has some implications to something called subtype discriminator. We want to know which subtype the instance belongs to. So we need to create something called subtype discriminator to show which subtype the instance belongs to. When we create a subtype discriminator, if the supertype subtype meets the disjoint rule, what we will do is we'll create a simple attribute with alternative values to indicate the possible subtypes. 
So for example, in this slide we have employee. There are three subtypes here. It meets the disjoint rule because one employee cannot be simultaneously an hourly employee, salary employee, and a consultant. It can only belong to one of these three subtypes. So it meets the disjoint rule. We create an attribute called employee type, which is the subtype discriminator. And employee type has three possible values. So one is H, one is S, or the null value. Because if it's a null value, then it means the person is a consultant. If the supertype and subtype meets the overlap rule, then what we are going to do is we are going to create a composite attribute whose subparts pertain to different subtypes. Let's look at an example here. In this example, we have part that has two subtypes. And a part can simultaneously be a manufactured part and a purchased part. So in order to create the subtype discriminator, we are going to create an attribute called a part type. But this part type is a composite attribute. It has two simpler components here. One is called manufactured with a question mark. The other one is purchased with a question mark. Both of these two attributes will have the Boolean values, which means it can either be yes or no. If the instance of the part is only a manufactured part, for the part type field, the value would be yes and a no. Yes to the manufactured question mark and a no to the purchased question mark. If it's both a manufactured part and a purchased part, your value will be yes and a yes for both attributes. And if it's only a purchased part, not a manufactured part, then your value will be no and a yes. Sometimes you can have multiple levels of supertypes and subtypes. In this example, you have person as the supertype that has all the common attributes, social security number, name, address, gender, date of birth. And then there are three subtypes, employee, alumnus and a student. And the one person can simultaneously be an employee and an alumnus, or can be a student and an employee. So that's why there is an O in the center of the circle here. And also a person has to be a member of these subtypes, so that's why there are a double line here. For employee, it can be either faculty or staff. The person cannot be both a staff and the faculty simultaneously. So that's why you put a D here in the circle. For student, you have two subtypes, graduate and undergraduate students. And a student cannot be both a graduate and an undergraduate, so you put a D here. But a student has to be either a graduate student or undergraduate student, so you put double lines here. And the reason why for the employee there is only a single line here is there may be another type of employee who does not belong to the faculty or the staff subgroups.